Hi, I'm Pox. I'm Couch Guy. And you're watching the Two Smart Guys show. And this is the CES episode from a month ago. <laughs> let's let's just be honest. It's been so busy since CES and all the other stuff. He's been back and forth to Vegas three times. Well, I put out like six episodes and I was like, ah. Uh, I think people are sick of it. So this is the last one. <laughs> this, is, this is the last of the footage that I didn't put out. Basically, you can't have the footage taken and not put it out. Yeah. So, yeah. so I was like, Just yeah. as a, let's like, remember CES. Yeah, I remember way back when. Like 30 <laughs> days ago? Like 30 days ago. <laughs> when CES was around and all that equipment was new. Now it's just old garbage. Throw it in the e-waste pile. <laughs> Yeah, actually, none of it's shipping yet. <laughs> yeah, none of it's even come out yet. <laughs> It'll probably have it, but never will. Well, you know. So here's a chance to watch some more cool things that you might see out next year. Yeah. Maybe it won't come out at all. Let's see. All right, so some of the some of the cool things they had there. Uh, they're showing up. Sony owns a movie studio, so they're showing Obviously. up. Obviously. Green Hornet stuff. Cause, if you can't you know. pimp your own stuff, why pimp anything? Right, exactly. And uh, motion-based controlling for TVs. Which I like to say, Connect is gone awry. I think it works pretty good, but that particular demo didn't. People were jumping around like crazy. I uh, disagree with motion controlling anything. I'm lazy. And uh, if you saw one of the previous CES episodes, uh, NBC Universal let me use their booth to do some show editing and uploading. And Who are these guys? I ran with the Hack 5 group. Yeah, you guys watch Hack 5, right? Yeah. Let me hold that still a little bit. So you've got, so what is this? Just like a right. little, um, so what this is is just a, you know, fanny, uh, but this is an iPod Touch, uh, latest gen, so if you want to take pictures of so. yourself. But the cool part is we have the uh, Pro Prompter software installed. You go ahead and launch it, and usually you can control it remotely, but you can actually just, if you select it, shows up pretty well so they're you know, looking a little bit down at the camera so you don't get that kind of eye in the sky kind of look but and they can control it remotely so that's that software but it's all mounted on to this plastic piece that's just kind of clipped up underneath the lens mount there if I can take it so yeah yeah it's a little bit of glue there and you got the mics packed in underneath there it's pretty decent cool. Robots everywhere, cleaning the floors. Yeah, because like, God forbid we mop our own floors. Yeah, and I don't know, this is just kind of silly. I guess you can make a game out of it. I don't know. You know, it might get your kids to do the, you know, the housework. Yeah, a big toaster oven robot. <laughs> I don't know. Oh, a helicopter. Everyone yeah, likes helicopters yeah, anymore. Yeah, everybody's trying to get your attention. And this is, um, this is pretty cool. So this, little, this, this company, they make um, water repellent, basically. So electronics like your cell phones and things, they don't have to work about making them, or you so much about making them watertight. Like they really want to put this stuff on their phones. Let's be honest. Yeah. Is a cell phone company ever going to pay the extra two cents it would cost to spray my electronics with this stuff? Yes. Let, no, they're not. <laughs> because you know what? Every time that my wife drops a phone in the bathtub, I pay... 50 bucks to my insurance company, to which I pay $6 a month, to which pays them 300 bucks. Well, what they'll do is they'll put it on there anyways and put the red dot, so... They, yeah, it yeah. still screws everything up. <laughs> anyway, all right, so we've got two pieces of paper. Yeah, two pieces of paper. Uh, this one has been treated. This one has not. So we'll do the, the one that's not first just to show you. This is normal paper, and as soon as you put it in, you can kind of see it just kind of bleh. Yeah. Now you can see, I, I will put this next one in exactly the same amount of time. Okay, so you go, bonk. It's like, it's repelled the wall. Like, you can see a little bit on the t surface of it. Like, it just shoves right off. But it, in no way does the same thing that this one did. Yeah, it's like, pretty cool. And it's the same kind of paper. Like, you can feel it. It feels the same. Anyway. Yeah. Anyways, cool. that, that was one of the, one of the things. I like getting things wet. <laughs> Let's just be honest. <laughs> All right, uh, back to more of the demos. Back to CAS. Yeah, if you, um, yeah, if you just want to explain to me what you were, you were doing just a second ago. Okay. Okay, so what is TIE? TIE is a loss or theft prevention device. And what it does, it partners with your phone via Bluetooth. You don't download an app on your phone. 
plug this in via a mini USB port, charge it for about 15 minutes and it will last up to three weeks. Depending on what you want to um, protect, you set the sensitivity level on this inter interface here. So you can set it to a low sensitivity, say if it was a coat that you were leaving at the front of a restaurant, or a high sensitivity for something that you wouldn't want to be further than, say, an arm's length away from your body. So something like your keys, you would probably have on a high sensitivity. And if it goes beyond that distance, then it sets off an alarm on your phone. And it's either an audible alarm, vibration, or it will display with a flashing. Now, is there a component that goes onto the phone? Or have, or? No, the app goes on the phone, and that's what goes off if the keys leave that distance that you've set. So is it a Bluetooth device? It is a Bluetooth device. That's how it communicates with the phone. So is there a battery in there, then? Yes, there is. So there's a battery in there, but you just plug it in via a micro USB port. So you just need to open up this little window here, plug it into your USB port of your computer, charge it for 15 minutes, and it will last you three weeks. Oh, okay, three weeks then. Yeah, that's right. So you can basically charge it, set it. You can set this it to different items as well. I've got this set for my wallet. I could set it for my keys. If I set it for my keys, for instance, and I'm carrying my keys around and I sat my cell phone on the counter as I was paying for something and started walking away, if I had it on a high sensitivity, I literally wouldn't get, you know, with that out of arm's reach away from the phone before the keychain would start flashing and beeping and saying, you know what, you've forgotten something, go back. Um. What is, the what is the cost, the retail cost? Okay, the retail value is $70 via our tietogether.com website. It comes with this keychain. It also comes with the USB cable that you can use to plug in. But you could use the same cable that you use to charge up your smartphone, for instance. They're the same jack. So if you don't have that little cable with you, you could use another cable. So say if you were traveling, you don't need to take a bunch of different cables but it does last three weeks so it's not something that you need to charge along with everything else on a daily or you know weekly basis and now um the, the, you also showed a wallet one is that the same cost yes so this little product here is available with all different accessories there is a wallet accessory there's a carabiner a money clip there's also a document paper clip, so you could pop that, say, onto uh, your, jour your journal or your planner as you're going along. That's something that often people leave sitting in a taxi cab or on a seat in a subway, and it's going to let you know if you are in the subway because it uses Bluetooth, so you don't have to have any mobile reception service. Great. Um, so where is it available? Where can we buy it? You can buy it on tietogether.com currently and it will be available in March. March? All right, yeah. great, thank you. Thanks for talking to us. Thanks. Thanks. Uh, do you want me to give you the, the actual three minute spiel? Ever developed. Sure. Cool. Yeah. So I'm Jeff Mullen, founder and CEO of Dynamics. Uh, what we've done is we've put an entire computer architecture into uh, your average credit card. Uh, there's over 70 chips in the card that are squeezed into one-tenth of a cubic inch of space. The reason we do that is so that we can change at the push of a button all of the information on your 1970s era magstripe. We have the world's first card programmable magstripe. And so you can switch between accounts, and every time you switch between accounts, all that information on that magnetic stripe changes. So you're using the 60 million 1970s era mag stripe readers uh, that we use in 90% of our day to day credit and debit card purchases. And so you'll see a consolidation of those types of products first. Um, and so you'll see an issuer give you, instead of two cards, one card, and start building a, a, a strong relationship. Sure, and so the cards are 33 thousandths of an inch thick. They are just as flexible and durable as a normal card, and the battery lasts over four years on a single battery charge. Therefore, when cars expire in three years, you'll just be sent a, a new Dynamics card like normal, and your, uh, your, your service will not be interrupted. Wipe them out. I want to rewrite my... This one's cool, even though I think it's still kind of bogus. It wipes the magnetic stripe automatically until you put your pin in on the front. And the number on the front doesn't show until you put your pin in on the front. So people can't steal your number. So you put it in, it runs for, it works for 30 seconds and it wipes itself. And he says the, car, the batteries last about three years, so the cards you have to replace every like two years anyways, so uh, you never have to worry about replacing the Good battery. Good luck getting the replacement cards so fast on that.
<laughs> you lose your credit card. It, it, well, he was saying it's actually uh, really low cost. It's not. I want him to do a hotel key. So I want him to scan my hotel key, and then I can, like, if I have a problem with it, I can lay it over top of it and have it reflash my hotel key. <laughs> I am tempted to buy myself a magnetic strip writer and writer just for that reason. <laughs> because that way, okay, I get my hotel key, zap it. Now I know my key number. Every time I have a problem, I re-stripe my own. I'm lazy. I don't like to walk downstairs. I pack this stuff with me anywhere, anyway. <laughs> Yeah. All right, anyways, this is the Microsoft booth, and they had people in bubbles playing Connect, and they were showing off their Windows 7 phones and Fable. And Yeah, I haven't yet to meet anyone who really likes their Windows phone. Trying to, oh, you know what the big feature is on the Windows 7 phone? <laughs> Android? Excel! <laughs> Android? <laughs> they have the fact that you can do, dual boot a lot of them into Android. Nice. <laughs> Oh yeah, so this is this is the funky little Motorola docking station for their new phone. So you can plug it in the phone into the back, and it'll be a laptop. It'll basically be Chrome, uh, Chrome OS. I can deal with that, which is kind of neat. I'd want to have my phone and my tablet communicate enough together so that I could talk to one or the other. Oh, and then then they have their tablet, which is showing also has a dock. So that it'll, you know, show up on a big TV or whatever. Yeah, I'm, I'm less concerned about my tablets. I, I want, I want my phone and my tablet to talk to each other enough that I don't have to pack a computer with me. Because mm. I could remove a computer if I did that. Because yeah. my, ta- I don't necessarily have to have my tablet get wireless internet as long as my phone does. So as long as they can talk to each other. <laughs> The uh, Motorola Zoom browser as well. Same thing for all your Gmail contacts, your ebooks, and I think you'll see as well for, for videos, music, and so forth. Uh, seamless, intuitive interaction, single login, um, beautifully integrated with all the other Google services also. When is this coming out? Uh, so, this will be coming out in the February timeframe with uh, Verizon, our launch partner. What's the price? Uh, we'll be competitive price, so it'll be uh, th- a 3G, 32 gigabytes initially. Given all the other features, 4G upgraded building, I think consumers will be very uh, happy with uh, with the pricing of it. What is the resolution? Uh, the resolution is, is 1280 by 800. So true 720p uh, cable with display. The device itself can play back 1080p, but obviously optimized for 720p. I read our. They find girls for you and dress them like policemen. Yeah, the, the less impressive the product, the more models they tend to have at their boots. <laughs> But it was kind of cool. I mean, it, it makes your phone go off and say, hey, there's a cop around the corner. And it's smart, so it'll, like, communicate with all the other people that have them, and so you can identify speed traps. And hey, I had, that, I had that software on my BlackBerry, like, two years ago. And it, what, did it work through just, like, GPS? Yeah. Well, see, this one's actually detecting radar, though. Oh, see, mine was... Mine would do GPS tracking through the web, and then the web would respond and update you according to um, where speed traps and cops were seen. This awesome new technology downloads threat areas right to your detector as you're driving. And it ups- yes, yeah, so everybody in the brother had an Android tablet except for BlackBerry. Their tablet is running QNX. I, I, hear the Android, I hear the BlackBerry tablet is the one that's going to kick some major butt. They, they were showing it off, and it, it did real multitasking, had a lot of memory. Had a lot I of power. cannot tell you that I have good feelings because, uh, <laughs> with uh, BlackBerry right now when I've got... But it doesn't run the same thing as their phones. so It's not using uh, it's RAM? Not, it's totally different. It's QNX. It's like a really kick-ass... Um, it can do multitasking. <laughs> Unlike Grim. Well, yeah, uh, like I first time I heard about QNX was from these guys in California that made like experimental um, drilling equipment and things that would like monitor um, the equipment, but it was powered by like the batter. They were self charging monitors, but the vi- vibrations of the machinery would charge them up to do monitoring and they'd have like Bluetooth and they'd communicate with each other and they'd give back real time diagnostics on the equipment. It was just kind of far out there stuff. But they always used QNX. 
they said it's real time. It's the only real time operating system. It's like Unix based stuff and Windows stuff. And they say they're, you know, multitasking and everything, but it's not real time. The operations aren't real time. Like, what do you mean they're not real time? Well, I think they're quantum time because they happen faster than real time really happens. <laughs> but that's a whole nother discussion. Anyways, uh, it's based on QNX, and it's not the whole... So when people make apps, they're going to have to make separate apps. Yeah, that's actually probably going to kill it. I don't know. What is it called, a playbook? Oh, yeah, that's the other thing, battery life. They're like, uh, we're going to try and get it up there. <laughs> so they can do all this stuff for jewelry, but they can't make it so that when I walk around, it actually charges my own battery? There was another product that I showed like in the first CES video called the Pongo Plug. It was like a little shtick, and you put it in your backpack, and it just charges up. It's like a USB plug, um, plug, and you just plug whatever you want into it. And it not to be confused with the pogo plug. No, it's like a peg. Anyway. Anyways, it um, it wasn't a lot of juice. It was enough to power an iPod Nano for as much as you walk. So if you were walking, it would infinitely power it. So for every minute of walking, you got a minute of playtime. All right, so another cool thing is wireless power, right? I love wireless power. Everybody's trying to go wireless, but the last thing that's holding us back is batteries. Because, well, batteries run everything. Right. So what if you don't need the battery? What if you can just get the power wirelessly? Then Tesla was right. <laughs> well, Tesla Motors, electric car... They don't want you to have to plug it in, right? I mean, you, you don't yeah. want to park your car in the garage and then go plug it in for the night. You just want to just drive in and let so it So they're going to do, like, induction paddocks. Yep. And this company, they have, they said it can go uh, over six inches, which is, like, an industry first. So you don't have to actually physically connect anything. So you just drive into your garage, it charges. They had the thing that I watched on um, TED that was a wireless transmission of power. So I, I think it is going to come out because it's using magnetic coils and they like powered it. This guy held the TV up. I saw up. that. I saw it was that. like 15 feet away yeah. or 10 feet away. Then he just held it up and the, like the coil shot into it. Yeah. So yeah, this cakewalk, six yeah. inches, and, sure. And then the cool thing, the really cool thing they had. Just was, don't blame them for the cancer. That, that two more cool things. The other two cool things were a uh, kitchen counter that had little, little dots on it. Are we talking about motion counters again? No, no. There's a count, a counter. Okay. A counter, and they had a little frying pan, and they put had water in it, and they'd set it on there, and the water would boil like shh, instantly, almost faster uh, than in a microwave. Count. Yeah, and then she picked it up, she touched the bottom of it, touched that, not hot. And it was Creepy. through induction. And then they had a Campbell's coop, a, Cam, a Campbell's soup cup, that had it built into the cup, and they said it just added pennies to the cost of the cup. And it had a little meter on it. Said so when it's done, you just put it on the dock, psh, heats it up. That's freaky. Because <laughs> you put the thing in your hand, and then your hand boils every time no. you get near it. No, it doesn't do anything. It's just perfectly safe to touch. It wasn't hot. Till it fries your brains. They said they said it all passed all the FCC um, regulations, and it wasn't frying any brains. That's and the other cool thing they had was shelving for like Walmart, right? And they had, like, tricks boxes and all these cereal boxes that lit up like Las Vegas. They were, like, yeah. all these lights going off and patterns and stuff. Take them off the shelf, nothing. No electronics in the actual box other than ink. The ink was printed on just, like, regular printer ink, but it was uh, met metallic ink. So it was, like, iridescent or...? They just said it was just, uh, they just use metallic ink instead of regular ink, and they're able to print the circuit onto the, into the inside of the box, into the layers of the box. And that powered the... Whatever lights and things or bells and whistles they're going to put in there. Yeah. And they said you just recycle it like anything else. They said it was just... Yeah. And, and then the circuit on it would also keep inventory. That's what they really want it for. Yeah. And, and, and also, so first it would start off in supermarkets, but eventually it would be in your house, too. Yeah. So you'd know, you know how much you had of whatever you had. And they would know, too, when they drove by. <laughs> so anyway, that was pretty cool. Oh. That was, that's the wireless. That will actually get, that'll actually get killed only because of the privacy BS that goes on. Nah, it'll be all Facebook-sponsored. No, because they were freaking out. People were freaking out because, um, now, this is almost 10 years ago they brought this up. That they would be able, the grocery stores would monitor what you had in your cart 
before you went to checkout. Like they would just keep check. They would like basically so that when you walked into the register, the register would like be activated and know what you had in your cart and just charge you. And as soon as you walked through the thing, like it, would, it had known what you put oh, in there, yeah. and the cart knew the cart itself knew what you had in there, and the cart relayed itself to the cashier, and then they no longer had to check you out. They could just bag it or not bag it, whatever you know, depending on the method. People freaked out. Wow. I don't know. People we'll are weird about privacy we'll see. things. Anyways, that's CES. And that's the end of CES. The end of CES until Holy next. Holy crap! That's a lot of CES. Until next year. You spent too much time at CES, I think. Yeah, uh, I think so. And I'm trying to go back to South by Southwest. <laughs> and probably NAB. Yeah, I don't know if I'm going to get to go to NAB or not. Really? I'm pushing for it, but... Anyways, um, you've been watching the Two Smart Guys show, and we do shows every single Monday. So, subscribe on iTunes. Subscribe on YouTube. And YouTube. Subscribe. 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 <laughs> twosmartguys.com there's links on the side just go where you are and subscribe because we are there yeah and uh, thanks for viewing the show and if you have any comments or suggestions please email me I'm Pox at Two Smart Guys um, Twitter I'm at Walking Crow I'm basically unreachable and your your couch guy on nothing I don't know at, at Two Smart Guys and am I really wow Tommy 5C on Tommy 5C at Twitter Twitter yeah <laughs> I'm not Couch Guy on Twitter. Get somebody completely else. That's and then uh, Ragwell's Ragwell, but he's not here. I don't know where he's at. Ragwell's doing spy missions. <laughs> All right, see you guys next week. Bye. This has been a Two Smart Guys production.